water bottle to jet engine. This project idea came about a long time ago when I was thinking of what to do with an old water bottle that didn't keep water cold anymore. After a bunch of rather terrible ideas, I came to the realization that a stainless bottle had some resemblance to a jet engine combustion chamber and could possibly be made into just that. The stainless steel could handle a considerable amount of heat and the double walled construction would allow for a separate combustor liner that would fit perfectly into the outer case. Because a small combustor like this wouldn't be ideal for a turbine, I solved this issue by using an electric compressor to supply the air. This approach made the combustion section more like an afterburner that would augment the electric thrust rather than provide its own power. I called this type of engine the Pyro Flask as a play on the name of a popular bottle brand. About five years ago, I built the first version of this thruster, knowing almost nothing about compressor design or thermodynamics. This first version was not very good. Suffering from low thrust, constant overheating, and frequent flameouts, version 1 was scrapped after just a couple of test firings. About two years later, I would go on to make a second version with a different compressor design and improved combustion characteristics. It still made little thrust and was severely underpowered. Last year, I made a third version, the first to make real measurable thrust. This was due to a much better design of both the compressor and the chamber, using a much more powerful motor and an aluminum impeller. This design had a very high boost pressure of 6.5 psi, but it only ended up producing 10 newtons due to its small nozzle size. The small thrust didn't come close to offsetting its own weight, making it impractical for flight. The goal of this next version was to produce enough thrust to offset its own weight and hopefully the weight of the batteries as well. The most important part that would affect the thrust output is the compressor design. For peak performance, the compressor needs to deliver a balance of pressure and airflow. Too much boost pressure and there is not enough mass flow through the nozzle to produce usable thrust. Too much flow and insufficient pressure will lead to inefficient and unstable combustion. Looking into different compressor types, there are axial compressors and centrifugal compressors, which have different performance characteristics. Axial compressors generally can achieve higher efficiencies, but are more complex and require tighter tolerances. In the pursuit of higher efficiency, I wanted to make an axial compressor and see if it could be an improvement over my previous centrifugal designs. I designed a five-stage version that would be 3D printed and powered by an even more powerful motor. This went together rather well with tight blade tip clearance and small gaps in between the stators. With it fully assembled, it was time to test the compressor under both normal loading and surge conditions. Three, two, one. <laughs> Survived that. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, that's bad. Unfortunately, this axial compressor design did not survive testing as the surge test caused the PETG plastic to melt from the compression heating. This was a discouraging result, especially considering that the boost pressure is only a small fraction of what my early centrifugal prototypes could achieve. So in the interest of simplicity and reliability, I got to designing a brand new centrifugal compressor that pushed the limits of what can be done with 3D printed plastic. With a fairly aggressive back sweep angle and a compact housing, this flow-optimized compressor was designed to deliver all the motor's available power through the opening of the bottle-based combustor. Although not my highest pressure variant, the high volume of air meant that I didn't need any nozzle inserts to build up chamber pressure. I used the most powerful motor I could find rated for 50,000 RPM, and this 4092 inrunner does not disappoint, rated for 4.2 kilowatts of continuous power. Now that I had a pretty good compressor, it was time to focus on the combustion chamber. Starting with the bottle, most double-walled stainless bottles will work as they all have very similar construction. The one I used for this was very old and slightly tapered, but has the same three basic parts as any other bottle. It has an outer wall, an inner wall, and a bottom cap. I first removed the bottom cap with the Dremel, and then used a wire brush to scrape off all the paint. Once the paint was removed, I used a belt sander to remove all the welds, which allowed the inner chamber to slide out the bottom. The threaded section was also cut off as it was no longer necessary. I marked and drilled the air holes in the inner chamber to turn it into an effective combustor liner. I also bent each hole towards the oncoming compressor air to aid in the mixing of air in the combustion chamber. 
Based on jet engine liners, I used sparse patterning of small holes near where the fuel is injected, and gradually increased the hole size and density towards the nozzle. I also used a number of film cooling rings of very tightly arranged air holes on the inside, and thin bent gaps around where the nozzle protrudes from the case. This design uses an annular fuel injector that works with gaseous fuels such as propane and butane. To use liquid fuels such as alcohol or kerosene, a different injector design may be warranted. To make this injector, I bent a piece of copper tubing into a ring and then carefully drilled eight 2mm holes around its circumference. This is then slid into the liner and fastened with wire ties. At this point, everything can be put together with a 3D printed adapter that has a built-in ignition wire. I hooked it up to my test stand and attached a servo fuel valve to control the mixture of fuel in the chamber. Now that it was together, it was time to light it up. Throughout this test, this version of the engine was extremely easy to use, with very stable combustion at a wide range of fuel flow rates. It is also one of my loudest contraptions I've ever tested in the backyard, far louder than any of the rocket engines. But the real question is, how much thrust did it get? Well, I didn't know initially because all of my scale cameras had poor exposure settings, making the data unreadable. This meant I needed to do another round of testing to determine its actual performance. This engine produced just over 20 newtons of thrust at full combustion, with small losses in thrust as the batteries ran down and the fuel tank was depressurized. This is much more than double the 8 newtons or so that was achieved with just the compressor alone. This performance is more than double the previous best version, making it potentially powerful enough for flight. However, the engine itself weighs 1.37 kilograms, the batteries and controller weigh about 800 grams, and the fuel for a 3 minute run would also weigh about 200 grams, giving a total power system thrust weight of 0.9, which isn't ideal, but it still might get off the ground on a smooth runway. Unlike my turbojet engine, that barely lasted 3 minutes, this thruster seems to have no time limitations with the motor remaining cool and film cooling doing its job, bringing no obvious hot spots in the chamber or nozzle. This is a considerable improvement on the early versions that had white-hot nozzles barely on the edge of melting.
The only real limitation of the thruster is how much electrical power it takes. On a 12-cell lithium battery, this engine takes 2.9 kilowatts, meaning the single set of batteries can only run it for 3 to 4 minutes. If longer run times are needed, it can be run off bigger packs at the expense of extra weight. If you're thinking about building a thruster like this at home, my suggestion is don't. There are many things that can go catastrophically wrong with an engine like this, such as debris ingestion, compressor failure, and fuel fires just to name a few. Of the many hazards presented during operation, most of them can be simplified into this hazard diagram showing the different zones to avoid. For example, during most of my testing, I was positioned here, which is the safest zone at close range. My Arduino-based controller also has a number of fail-safes in place, so any loss of power or signal will shut down the engine and the fuel system. Based on the performance of this engine, there are still several improvements to be made, mainly on the compressor side that would significantly improve the thrust to weight. One option would be to increase the voltage of the motor, or increase the impeller size so that it could actually output its full rated power. I could theoretically squeeze 44% more power through the same motor to get higher thrust. I also designed all 3D printed parts to have solid infill for strength and pressure tolerance, but a lighter material with less infill would save several hundred grams and still withstand operating conditions. I could replace the 6mm thick aluminum heatsink motor plate with something much lighter such as a carbon fiber plate because the motor was only slightly warm after nearly 10 minutes of testing. Lastly, I could swap the gas system to run off of liquid fuel, which would require a pump but still save weight on all the bulky brass fittings and valves needed to run propane. This project has been a fun exploration into unconventional jet propulsion and has been a valuable learning tool in shaping the design of combustion-based turbo machinery moving forward. The endurance capabilities of this design set it apart from its predecessors, meaning that with enough power, it could likely run for several hours on end. I hope to continue to develop such engines and maybe eventually put one of these to use. That went great.